With Alien 3, we entered uh, what I call the Dark Ages of the Alien franchise, in which we are still in, in my opinion. So let's see how I feel about one of its most polarizing entries. So Alien Resurrection uh, is the fourth film in the franchise and was directed by French director uh, Jean-Pierre Junet. Junet? Junet? I should have probably looked that up first. Anyways, he's awesome. Uh, and, and that right there for me is, is one of the most interesting aspects of this film. I think um, maybe a lot of people kind of overlook that little detail. Uh, you know, he's known for directing cult classics like uh, Amelie, Delicatessen, uh, and The City of Lost Children. He was approached to direct because of his unique visual style. Uh, you know, he was surprised because he, he assumed the franchise, uh, you know, had ended after Alien 3 or would have ended. And he also thought that continuing, uh, you know, was a bad idea. And he didn't really have any interest in directing this movie to begin with. He was super busy at the time with his own projects. And he, he honestly, and he stated he did not want to do any Hollywood stuff in general. He just wanted to keep making it, you know, his, his French films. But he took the job, you know, and, and the rest is history. The cast here, pretty solid in my opinion. And I, I, I also need to say that I, I first saw this movie in the theater when I was 17. That, that little detail is kind of important here. I was already an Alien fan, but this was my first time seeing something from the franchise in the theater. I didn't even get to see Alien 3. And because of all that, I was a fan of this movie. And I, I remain a fan to this day, uh, despite its, its many, many flaws. So Sigourney Weaver returns, of course, which I'm surprised since she was on the fence about Alien 3 already as it was. And she will typically deny, uh, you know, any Ripley role if she doesn't find the story interesting. And I, and I love that about her. We also get Winona Ryder, Ron Perlman, Michael Wincott, uh, and Brad Dorff. Again, solid cast, but these, these characters are kind of wacky. And the story takes place uh, 200 years after Alien 3, which is also just kind of kind of crazy to me. Ripley is back, like I said, uh, which is odd since she dies at the end of Alien 3, which was a dark, somber ending to a trilogy. And I gotta say, this kind of immediately makes me feel like, you know, this movie is a total cash grab, and Ripley is, you know, she's now not only a clone of herself, but a clone uh, mixed with Queen Alien DNA. It's weird. So it's not really Ripley, but it kind of is. Uh, she's stronger, she's faster, she's got the acidic blood like the Xenomorphs have. Uh, kind of different, but similar. Um, and she is empathetic towards uh, Xenomorphs. And this is all a plan, yet again, to weaponize the Xenomorphs. Uh, which is kind of stale at this point. But that said, they do mix it up a little bit. It's not just weaponizing Xenomorphs at this point, it's... It's conducting experiments on them and stuff like that. So it's th that's some of the credit that I will give to this movie. They kind of like they it, Joss Whedon, you know, the writer. Uh, it's almost like, you know, I assume he knew what would be redundant and he knew to add to that a little bit, tweak the formula just a little bit. So do with that what you will. Um, and, and this time it's the U.S. military instead of the, the Whalen yutani Corporation. I don't know the story behind that, why that is. Um, you know, they, they have been trying uh, this time to create the perfect hybrid clone, uh, which they have finally figured out with, with the Ripley clone. And there's a team of mercenaries uh, that have been bringing humans uh, to the USM Auriga, uh, which is the military ship where these experiments have been taking place. And then those humans are used uh, for the experiments, you know, implanting, uh, implanting, you know, uh, yeah, xenomorph embryos and, and just whatever else. Kind of horrific when you think about it. Uh, and the mercenaries give this film, uh, I hate to say this, but kind of like a Paul W.S. Anderson vibe, you know, very of its time, 1999. But also, come on, man, kind of a fun action adventure feel. And, all, you know, these mercenaries, they all look different. Uh, they all have individual personalities, different weapons, uh, and they're led by Michael Wincott. I gotta say, though, my favorite of them is, uh, I can't remember how his name is pronounced, Bryce, Brees, uh, played by Dominic Pinon, uh, who rolls around in, like, a super cool uh, futuristic wheelchair. He is the mechanic in, in, the, in the crew. Um, I just like him. I just think he's really cool. 
So like I said, you know, this movie does mix up the alien formula quite a bit, at least where it, where it needs to, where it would make sense to, you know, for things not to, to feel stale, for it to feel kind of like its own movie. Uh, but it does make it for kind of a strange watch. It's got a weird, especially in the beginning, it's got a weird, almost satirical vibe. Uh, it's kind of, it's just weird. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of jarring at times. And at, and at other times, it's kind of cheesy. Uh, you see the queen alien uh, very early on in the movie, and she looks cool, as all the xenomorphs do, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I'm definitely happy that they put the proper amount of care into, in my opinion, the greatest monster, greatest movie monster ever created. Um, so I, I, I want to leave the key scenes unspoiled for anyone, you know, watching that hasn't seen Alien Resurrection. You know, I have decided that even when I do review older movies, I'm not going to assume everyone has seen them. So I'm, I'm, as far as, you know, as far as right now, I'm, I'm going to keep every review I do spoiler free. I might include a little bit more in older movies, but you know, the younger generation might find these reviews, you know, and I, you know, I don't want to spoil, uh, you know, key elements or key scenes for anybody. That's just kind of a little stuff going on in my head there. Um, so. That said, though, I, I, I'm, I'm going to spoil, maybe mildly spoil a few scenes that I've always liked from this movie and have stayed with me since 1999. So um, you've been warned, I guess, but I'm going to tread lightly. Uh, so there's a pretty infamous lab scene where Ripley, uh, or the Ripley clone, I guess call it Ripley, come on. Uh, she discovers all of the failed cloning experiments. Let's just say that one of them is still alive and it's pretty fucking horrific. Uh, to me, it's like total body horror on par with anything that like David Cronenberg ever did. Uh, I gotta say too, all of the practical effects in this movie hold up surprisingly well considering this, you know, considering the disaster it would have been uh, if it had been your typical 1999, you know, CGI heavy sci-fi movie. I also really enjoyed, you know, the underwater chase scene between the Xenomorphs and Ripley and the mercenaries. Oh, and there's a... Um, a chestburster scene because you know why wouldn't there be <laughs> I know I, I, I'd like to think that's not a spoiler um, but, but I have to say though uh, I think it's really cool this this scene I think it's great it's gory of course uh, it's actually kind of inventive and in my opinion it is superior to the chestburster scene in Alien Romulus overall though I think this movie didn't need to exist didn't need to be made um, but I do have a soft spot for it and I do to this day, enjoy watching it. I think it would have worked better as a non-alien franchise film and just a standalone, over-the-top sci-fi action-adventure movie with horror elements. I don't care for the Ripley as a clone story, although Sigourney Weaver does give a really good uh, and emotional at times performance. She's the star of the show, as always, as far as you know the human characters are concerned. So I'm giving Alien Resurrection a, a 6.5 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, you know, I know that I'm going to get some shit, at least from someone, for giving this movie any credit at all, but, uh, you know, I'm not really looking at this one objectively. I'm more looking at it, you know, through the the, the, the naive eyes of a 17-year-old Eli. The Eli that still had hopes and dreams. I, I mostly like it for the great practical effects, uh, decent gore, uh, shocking gross-out moments, and uh, I even like the new creature. Yeah, that one. I don't know, man. I like him. What a beautiful baby. <laughs> it's a fun movie. Maybe not a very good alien film. Anyways, what do you guys think about it? Cheers.